former immigration officer and first migrant British ambassador and chairman of Migration Watch UK. There we go. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. So, is this going to happen? <laughs> I share in Naya's scepticism. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, if it does, really, I'd like to know a little bit more about the practicalities of it. You know, how are they going to be flown out there? Who's going to be looking after them when they are there? What's going to happen when they go through the process and it all comes to an end and they're refused and turned down? It just, uh, to me, it seems like a headline-catching little announcement. And it's interesting that this came on the back of uh, the latest surge, which is now um, three over three times the number coming in so far this year than came in the same period last year. So I, I just wonder, really, whether the government has thought it through. And secondly, if they have thought it through, um, what is it that persuades them that it's actually going to work? However, I, I have no problem with the principle of overseas, uh, overseas uh, centres where their uh, applicants are being uh, considered. That that's fine, but it isn't in itself enough. I'm afraid overseas processing centres are fine, and it worked the Australians, but in this case. What's going to happen really to those who are considered inadmissible? And that's what the legislation, for example, is suggesting is, is going to happen. Will they be still considered? Will they be taken to Rwanda? What happens with those who, uh, frankly, having been considered, are denied uh, asylum? Will they still be flown over? Will it all be done? quickly? Are the Rwandans going to be looking after them while they're there? So lots and lots of questions that I think the, the, the government needs to answer and address, really, before we can say whether this thing will go, is going to happen and whether it's going to work. Mm, well, you know, lots of talk, but very uh, little action. I mean, th when it comes to migration, it does seem to be that that is the one issue that even successive governments, conservative governments, have just failed to get a grapple with. I remember that the infamous uh, getting migration, net migration down to the tens of thousands, knowing yeah, that, that we works. had an open borders for EU migration, that was just fundamentally not necessarily possible. And then we've had the Windrush candle, the go-home buses and so on. And now we have this nationality and borders bill, which um, it doesn't necessarily seem to have very many practical examples of whether or not this is going to be effective. I mean, what, what could be done? Because some people say this is an international problem, you know, that needs collaboration with EU partners and so on. Other people argue that maybe we should have a humanitarian visa um, that allows people to apply for the status in the country um, outside of the UK. I mean, what, what's your views on that? Well, Inaya, you've put your finger on a, on a number of different elements of this really very broad issue. It applies and it has an impact on so many different areas. Uh, we've got the cross-channel matter of people coming here illegally, and they are crossing illegally, frankly. Um, in addition to that, we've got the wider issue of, of immigration, which has been running at a, the rate of around 300,000 net foreign migrants coming to this country every year for the last 20 years. So uh, dealing with the cross-channel illegal immigration first and add to the boats uh, those who come across in lorries since 19... Uh, sorry, 2018, we've in fact had together something like 70,000 coming over that we know about. But in addition to that, um, we've got now people coming over in boats and frankly, having arrived or got their foot onto a, a British vessel, that's tantamount to coming here and staying. Until mm. that changes, that yeah. those who come here in this way are returned quickly from where they came, I'm afraid they will continue to come, whatever the government does. No, I, I, the wider yeah. issue, the wider issue is the matter of, uh, does anyone 
who wants a better life, really. And we heard that from the head of the Refugee Council only uh, yeah. a week or so ago, that a lot of these people, he says, are uh, really no more seeking, no more are they seeking than a, a better life. Well, fine, but there are millions and millions and millions of people who want exactly that. Yeah, exactly. Are they all going to be eligible well, to come to this country? Well, no, exactly. But, well, well, also, there's lots of people with the cost of living crisis in this country who want a better life, to be perfectly honest with you, to start with. But, but just, just quickly, I suspect, I was at a, I was at a rather interesting uh, meeting last night at ALP, actually, but, so people are going to have to watch this space. Sorry to leave people hanging here, but there's something coming your way, hopefully, in the next week or two. But I suspect, ALP, from what I can gather, that not only are they running out of hotel spaces for a lot of these people now... Local authorities are starting to say, we have not got the local authority housing and also our health systems cannot simply cope and our school systems cannot cope. And so the Home Office is having to wake up to the fact that these people can't all stay here. They're going to have to go somewhere like Rwanda. For all the, the, the tittle-tattle about it, I suspect that part of the reason behind this is as simple as that. We're running out of room for the amount of people who are coming over here. Yeah, a very good point. And in fact, um, Priti Patel herself admitted this when uh, she was talking about Afghan refugees. We simply don't have the housing to provide just for the Afghans, let alone for all the others who are coming here, in addition to which we've got those coming across the channel. So housing on its own, how many thousands are we going to have from, quite rightly, um, from from Ukraine. Of course, we've got to do everything we can to help. But simply saying, right, um, if you want to bring in a Ukrainian, do by all means. The detail has never been thought out. Now people are complaining that they've said they will take in Ukrainian refugees, um, but the government is too slow in giving them the authority, giving them the permission. Well, for goodness sake, you know, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people here, not just yeah. from Ukraine, from elsewhere as well. Mm. Well, thank you, Alp Mehmet, uh, Chairman of Migration Watch UK. Thank you for joining Pleasure. us.